Hey there everyone, my name is Atesh and welcome to the YouTube channel. In case you are new around on the channel, go ahead hit that subscribe button because I keep on bringing a lot of stuff. This channel is not just AI, this is a developer central, centralized, developer focused channel where we bring a lot of news and stuff which is happening around in the developer world as well as bring more tutorials so that you can learn backend, Python, JavaScript and whatnot. A lot of things happens on this channel, so consider hitting that subscribe. So, unless you are living under a rock, there are high chances that you have also seen the flood of the releases that happened this week throughout the AI world. And every single company is jumping around with the AI. I am super happy with this floodgate that has been opened. Now, honestly saying that compared to the Web3 flood, which introduced a lot of coins, I'm super happy with the flood, uh, with the updates that are happening in the AI world. And there is so much more potential where as a developer, especially as an application engineer, you are about to thrive. You're already thriving, but there are a lot of gates that are open for us. So this video is not just about the chat GPT. I'm pretty sure you have seen the latest version of it in case you are worried about that. Uh, let's get it straight out of here because we are not going to be focused on that particular just one news in this video. I want to bring your attention and focus on something different as well. So as you can see here, we have the chat GPT 4.0 and I'm pretty sure that you have seen the demos around it. And it's pretty fun that now I can talk to a chat GPT and talk to an AI. It can respond a little flirty ish, but it, it can respond to that. And there's so much more potential that you can design your own translators, you can design a mock interview client and whatnot. But there are certain problems with it. You, you cannot do it right out of the box, but there are other AI announcements which are making life a little bit easier. And you can build so many of the proof of concept. You don't need a team of thousand people now. You can just build it alone. And I'll show you what, uh, what about that. But before that, a couple of other updates that you am, I'm pretty sure you have missed that. So. The first one, my favorite one is go on to any website. Uh, why, why, why we are on the Stripe website? Uh, is this a tech product being released by Stripe? No, no, not that. Uh, all I want to do in this video is right click on it, click on inspect element. And I'm pretty sure you have been living on the inspect. A lot of people live in the network uh, tab itself. Go into the console. And you can see there are so many of these errors around and we, whenever we do any development, there are more such, more such errors that happens. Course, everybody knows it, everybody hates it, but it's there usually. Now, it's very difficult to actually go ahead, copy paste this. We have done it all. Uh, there is no exception. We all have copied this, pasted it in the Google to figure out what's going on wrong with my application. Now you don't need to do this. I can just click up here, understand this error. And I can actually go ahead and do this. Now, right now, this is not available for me because I haven't turned the Chrome syncing, but you can just go ahead, update that setting. I'm not going to do that. Uh, but yes, you can just go ahead and do that. And now you can understand any error in your console with the uh, direct injection of AI here. I think that is the most impressive thing that Google has launched. There are a couple other things that, that was launched. But I think this is the most interesting one. I have the AI power within my code editor. Now I have the AI power within my browser. I can develop things much more faster. So that's my number one update for you that, hey, now you can just see all of this. All you have to do is turn your uh, synchronization as on. I'm, I'm not interested in doing that in this version of the browser. I have different profiles for recording, for development and all of that. I don't want to do this in this one. Now, another thing that you need to understand first that what is the problem with this? For this, we'll be using some of the diagrams. So the first thing that you need to understand is you can definitely utilize the power of OpenAI, Gemini. Which one is your favorite? Go ahead and use that. But the biggest issue is, uh, let's just say this is your uh, mobile application. So this is my mobile. And you also want to take advantage of the chat GPT or any LLM model. So we're going to call this one as, let's just say I want to use chat GPT chat, Gypti, and uh, you can also use another model. Maybe you're a fanboy of Google Gemini, maybe you want to use it, or maybe any other uh, LLM. So let's just call it as generically LLM. So this is how the scenario looks like. And what you want to do is your mobile application, your client will request to these LLM models, and these LLM models will give you some of the response back. So this is pretty nice, but there is a problem. Whenever your mobile app directly talks with any of the LLM clients, you have something known as API key. And uh, these API keys are not easy to be maintained and handled in any of the mobile application. I mean, this is a front end. If let's just say you are well-versed in React 
and you're using just core React to talk to an LLM, to chat GPT, where you're going to manage your API keys. It's not easy. Your API keys can, can get exposed, whether you're building any core front end or you're be, even building any of the mobile application. So what usually happens is you don't talk like this. So let's just remove this. You, you never actually talk like this. There is always a requirement of in-between server that actually talks on behalf because on the server, we can keep our keys private. So this is kind of a scenario that goes on that you talk to the server and then on behalf of you, the server talks to the LLM clients or maybe chat GPT, wherever you're talking. And on the server, we prefer to keep our keys because that's a, that's a better way, that's a secure way. Now, this is how usually the things are being developed, but it's not easy to develop that way because of one reason, nobody knows how to design and maintain and scale the servers. It's, it's a full-time job in itself. And that's why people design for backend developers and they require backend developers. But there is, there is a way how you can actually manage that. And that is through the core functions. Yes. Nowadays, a lot of people provide services as a function as a service. So you can just write a bare minimum function, just upload that. Some people call it as lambdas. And in those, you can actually keep these keys uh, pretty much secure, pretty much private. And this is exactly the same infrastructure that you talk to the functions and then function talks to the chat GPT. Uh, the whole thing is there. Just the only advantage is you don't have to maintain your servers and all of that. Now, one such thing which, uh, which is being launched is one of my favorite one in the app, right? So if you go on to app, right, and check out their change log, it looks really simple that app, right, is uh, launching an AI, but it's not just an AI, it's an AI integration. This is something like they want to give power to the developers that, hey, you build things on your own, we'll just make your life a little easier. And if you'll just go ahead and read this announcement properly, this is where I really like that how the power is being handed over to the developers so that they can securely design uh, mobile apps, front end and all of that. So if you'll notice here, uh, this is the whole thing. This is the whole AI integration. And these whole AI integration is available to you just within the function. So you add in your keys and even the function is already cooked up. You just modify that function and that's a deploy. And you just focus on building what you were building. And right now you can even talk to Pinecone, OpenAI, Hiking Face is on the way. 11 labs, Perplexity. there's a lot of them, even Langchains, if you, so just a classic case of Langchain. Uh, you want to use two models, uh, one for writing your code, one for writing the test. Maybe, maybe you figured out that ChatGPT is good for writing code and Gemini is good for writing the test cases. You can use Langchain and just through the functions, one functions uh, takes the input of the user and pass it on to ChatGPT. It writes the code and then you can further chain it down to Gemini and Gemini can write the test cases for that code. Like all of this I can do within just the function. So this is all AI powered functions and they provide you even the templates for that. You don't have to do anything at all. Uh, you can just focus on building what you do best as an application engineer. We stitch the code together. We uh, like to build the application and there are tons of technologies that we use behind the scene and one can be like uh, prompt chat GPTs and uh, analyze perspective API. Oh, sensor with Redact. I don't know what they do, but there is a lot of features that I would love to explore. And this is where the community comes in. There are a lot of things that I'm not even aware of it, but when I see the template, I read more about it. I analyze more about it. There's so much and you can just click on the GitHub. That's the best part about it. All the source code is available. All the templates are available so that I can see what, what more I can do with it. Maybe I can analyze some of the things, provide a WhatsApp message to my clients and whatnot. Oh man, the whole, I think they should have done, uh, they actually maintain it in a much better organized fashion, but hey, there's, there could be a simple dedicated folder for the AI. It doesn't make sense to have an AI folder. This arrangement is better, but hey, I was expecting it. Like we have so many of the things that I can go ahead and explore, generate with fall, generate PDFs, email contact form. Like if you're building an application, very simple with just uh, allow the user to fill up a form and then sends an email, you can just inject a simple template there, a simple function which summarizes the entire conversation, what user is trying to send and then you can shoot a summarize email or a summarize Slack integration just with a function. So I think this is really super powerful and uh, we're also trying to see to build some of the proof of concept so that we can uh, share them with you in the upcoming tutorials and all of that. Uh, by the way, you can also check out Build with App, right? 
as well. That's pretty cool. So these were a couple of announcements so that I thought, uh, let me give you a brief overview and idea of how things are there. Uh, you can read more of this article. I'll link that in the description section. So yeah, and their pricing is pretty generous. So you can try them out absolutely for free. Yeah, like that. And another one, oh man, I love this that I can just now inspect and go in the console and can understand any error just like this. Oh man, the tutorials will be so much easier to build now and show people that what you're missing, why you are missing, it will be so good to teach students now with these AI capabilities. So these are all the AI updates that I thought I should be sharing with you. And again, so much, are, so much things are happening and they will happen and I'll keep on updating you about that. It's not just I bring what's happening latest in the hype. Of course, everybody is talking about chat GPT 4.0, but there is a lot more happening around the one. So stay connected, stay tuned and hit that subscribe button. I'll keep on bringing more such advanced feature and my perspective towards them that, hey, how we can utilize it and can build more applications with it. Building is the best fun thing that engineers do. So keep on building and uh, let's go ahead and catch up in the next video.